Hi, I'm Zach with HKN, and uh, today we're going to continue our series on Maxwell's equations. Um, we're up to the third one. Um, this one's called Faraday's Law, and this is the differential form of Faraday's Law. Now, um, we'll see, this is the first time in these videos that we see an electric field term and a magnetic field term in the same equation. And we also see a time derivative in this equation. So now we have some relationship between electric and magnetic field, and, and we'll talk about exactly what it means. But um, we're into electrodynamics, I guess we'd call it. So this equation in um, calculus terms, I guess, would say that the, uh, this operator here is the curl of the electric field. It's kind of the tendency of uh, the electric field to kind of exactly what it says, curl around some point in space, and it's a scalar value. And this is, well, the time, the negative of the time derivative of the magnetic field at that point. So this is the differential form, and as usual, it's a little bit hard to um, visualize, so we're going to do some integration. We're going to integrate this, both sides of this equation, over a... Um, let's do it over a, a surface, like a two-dimensional surface, just, or a, a one-dimensional surface, flat, flat plane. Um, now, when we integrate this curl over a, a plane, planar surface, it would make sense that the, result, um, the resulting E field on the outside edge would just kind of trace along the outside of our, um, of our shape, of our plane that we integrate over. And um, this will become, actually let's just do it, so when we integrate over a two-dimensional surface we get this side becomes the um, the integral around the outside around the outside path of our of our bit we integrated over and we have there, we have electric field dot product with dl, where l is an incremental length along the edge of our shape we integrated over. So that's this side, that's what that side becomes. Um, let's call this c. This is just indicating that we're integrating around the outside edge of our shape and that um, we'll see we can turn that into a circuit, so we'll call it c. So that is all equal to this negative sign stays and we can pull the time derivative term out. And now we integrated um, a B field over a surface, so we get the surface integral of our B field dotted with our differential area. So that is the integral form of Gauss's law. Um, all right, this is kind of in our way. We'll, we'll see that later. This is just the definition of voltage due to an electric field. We'll see how that comes into play. But um, So eh, we'll go like that. So what is this equal to? Um, so this is over a surface. And we have the, the time derivative of this term. And this term is the, is really the amount of magnetic field that is perpendicular to our surface, right? So we could call it magnetic flux. Um, so we'll call that, we'll call this whole side of the equation the time derivative of what we call, where this is uh, a term for flux. And for, um, for a uniform field, say one that is, um, has at any instant has the same value along our surface we integrated over, this would equal to um, the negative time derivative of B times A, where A is the entire area we integrated over, right? So, um, so this, let's do a problem with with this, let's do a problem with a uniform, a uniform magnetic field in a, in some area. All right, so 
Let's imagine, actually, let's imagine that we have uniform B field. Now, a uniform B field, one that's um, at any instant in time has the same magnitude um, that obeys our law we went over last week, um, Gauss's law for magnetism. And around this field, let's draw a shape. Um, now, my drawing might not be perfect, but this B field is perfectly perpendicular to the surface of this circle. Um, so let's, um, okay, so let's say that this B field is changing in time, right? All the vectors have the same magnitude, but, but they're changing magnitude altogether. So we have a time derivative. Let's say this B field is described by, um, let's say B is equal to um, five times, um, actually let's call it sine. Five times sine of uh, 100t. Now that's just something we arbitrarily came up with, but that's, that's reasonable. We, we see sinusoidal fields a lot. Um, and so, okay, so the key here is that this, this electric field um, from a changing magnetic field, it, it exists all the time. Um, but l let's say that this shape we drew, let's say that that's a circuit, let's say that's a conductor. Say we took a wire and bent it around. That way we can make the electric field do things for us. We can make it move charges around in our, um, in our wire. So let's cut the wire just barely. There's a little spot right there. And we'll call this um, point A and we'll call this point B. And now we have a, an open circuit in between point A and B. And we'll try to solve for um, the voltage between point A and point B. Um, given that all we know is actually, you know what, one other thing we're going to need to know is let's say this is a circle and we know it has radius R. So now given the size of this circle and the value of the magnetic field at any time in it, we'll, we'll see if we can solve for this voltage. All right, so, so we have a description for the magnetic field. And now what part of this problem do we, would we like to start with? Maybe since we know the, the size of our circle, we also know the area of it. So we, would know, we could know this term, right? We could know the negative derivative of the flux or the magnetic field times the area. So we will say that the, let's just come up with a term for just the flux first. It's gonna equal B times A, where, change markers here. Where B is equal to this term Actually, let's, let's see what A is first. So A, um, our area is a circle with radius R. So it's pi R squared, right? Pi R squared, that's A. And now B is five sine of 100 T. So that's our flux, our magnetic flux through the surface. And we need the negative time derivative of that. So what is that gonna be? That is gonna be um, actually, let's see. It's going to be equal to, so the derivative of sine is cosine, but we want the negative derivative. So we're going to have to say it's equal to negative pi r squared, um, 500 cosine of 100 t. Does that make sense? Um, so we just, yeah, we took the negative der time derivative of this term right here. So um, what is that? This, according to Faraday's law, this, um, this entire term right here is this term. So now we could set it equal to the other side of this equation. Let's see. Okay, actually, one other thing that's pretty important. Um, we have a convention called the right-hand rule. Now what that says is that this, um, 
it's kind of arbitrary how we define this direction, this differential direction in this differential area. But the right hand rule says that if we define the differential area to be this way, which we did, then we take the thumb of our right hand, we point it in the direction of our differential area, and the way our fingers curl is the way we integrate the line, the way we do this line integration around this. Does that make sense? So, so now we have, we have a term for the negative derivative of the flux, and we'll do that integration. We can say this is equal to the integral, and which way do we go? According to the right hand rule, we want to go, we want to start at b and go to a, right? So this would be the integral from b to a of, let's see, our electric field that exists along this outside. And our, so our dl would be pointing in this direction, e dot dl. So um, that looks pretty familiar from um, our definition of what voltage is, right? So we look up here and we see that the, in um, any two points in space, um, VA, the difference of the voltage at any two points in space, VA and VB, is the negative integral from B to A of E dot DL. That holds for any path we can make through any electric field. So we kind of, um, we have that almost here. Um, it's just missing a negative sign, right? So if this is equal to the negative voltage between A and B, right? Then we can say that the voltage between A and B is equal to um, the negative of this term, pi r squared, 500 um, cosine of 100t. All right, so basically we're saying that given this, electri uh, given this magnetic field changing through this surface, we would see a voltage at this value in between points A and B. And you know, we could, um, we could take that and make that do some work for us. We could put a resistor in between it and that would dissipate power accordingly. And this is really the underlying principle of a, um, a generator. We, um, we force a magnetic field to change through some loops and it generates a voltage. Um, it's also the principle that um, governs the, like the output side of a, of a um, transformer. So um, that's it for this week. Next week we'll see how we can make a magnetic field. We can see how, say how we'd make this magnetic field with an electric current. All right, thanks.